once again, Bottle Chester United strikes again. And hello and welcome here to this very special match analysis preview show. As today, based off the title and the thumbnail, we will be talking about everything that happened in the Galatasaray versus Manchester United game, which did finish 3-3 in Istanbul. And I tell you what, the two main people are there are Andre Onana and Karim Enteriguru. Because, well, that Karim Enteriguru, he scored a worldie of a goal to make it 3-3. But for Andre Onana, I tell you what, for Andre Onana, he will be thinking, Heidi Suile. That. Congrats on me singing. That is me Turkish singing for you. But, well, that's what he'll be thinking. And the lyrics translate to in English, Come on, tell me what I see in my dreams. Come on, tell me about my sleepless nights. And I tell you what, Oh, no, I did really have a sleepless night on this one. Let me tell you that. So just like that, let's get on the way and let's talk to you about the game in full. What happened in Istanbul? So they were obviously welcomed by a hostile atmosphere. And well, when you are going away to a place like Istanbul, you expect a hostile atmosphere from the Turkish opposition. And well, they did greet them and they greeted them in a very Galatasaray way. Obviously, when Manchester United have played Galatasaray before, it has been influenced with the welcome to hell symbol, what they did use in Istanbul. However, this time they wanted to use it again because for Manchester United, this game was really going to be hell. This game was really going to be hell. Oh, if they lost this game, they are out of the Champions League. If they win the game, they are second. If they draw, they still had a chance. However, it looks very unlikely that they will qualify. And they also wanted to do it for Galatasaray. The fact that they knew a win for them would more or less put them in the knockout round of the Champions League. And well, for Gala, that is a massive achievement if Galatasaray, Turkish team, can get into the round of 16. I mean, we've seen other Turkish clubs this week in Europe that have fallen. Besiktas, they lost 5-0 to Club Brugge. Fenerbahce, they lost 6-1 to Neuseeland in the Conference League. So... Altogether, them results for Galatasaray will be the best thing ever. The fact that your Turkish rivals are plummeting, losing five and six nils, and yet you can manage to get a draw against the basically the most historic team there is in the world, most historic team in England of Manchester United. That, for Gala fans, is not too shabby. But that is why the, the release were welcome to hell symbol so that it can create a hostile atmosphere for the Manchester United fans to get for the Manchester United fans and the Manchester United players to get used to. And then they did get used to it. I mean perfect, perfect start for Manchester United there. Right from off Alejandro Garnacho obviously he scored a wonder goal against Everton uh, the previous game. He scored again. He scored again against Galatasaray. 11 minutes gone. Bruno Fernandes found the ball. Passed it there to Alejandro Garnacho. Musolera beaten. 1-0 to Manchester United. And well, that was the perfect, perfect start there. Especially a hostile atmosphere at the Rams uh, Stadium. You expect that they will be some crowd that will be going against you. And well... It didn't phase Garnacho one bit. Just like the goal against uh, Everton, the overhead kick, he, he did the same again, but this time scored. Ice in his veins, 1-0 to Manchester United. Perfect, perfect start. And then it just got better and better. Bruno Fernandes, stunner of a goal, 2-0 to Manchester United. That, well... It was similar to Copenhagen. It was similar to Cop Copenhagen. Now we got two quick goals, made it 2-0 to Manchester United. We were in firm control. Bruno Fernandes there with that goal. Luke Shaw with the assist. And, well, we missed Luke Shaw. Manchester United missed Luke Shaw. And it paid off, didn't it, at the end? The fact that why we would miss him. And, yeah, that goal went in because of his pass. Bruno Fernandes, long-range stunner. 2-0 to Manchester United. Brilliant. Absolutely really brilliant. But then, in the most Manchester United of ways, we concede. We concede once again, thanks to a goal there from Hakim Ziyech. And, well, a lot of Manchester United fans didn't like this goal. 
I personally thought it was a very clever goal what Galatasaray scored. It was a very clever free kick what they trained from the training ground. See that little gap which is right there past Luke Shaw and possibly Bruno Fernandes, I think. It went through that. The ball, he decided to hit it, went through that little gap, went through Andre Onana and it went. It were 2-1 there to Manchester United, 29 minutes gone. And when when you think about this, you think... We need to stay composed. We're 2-1 down. We're 2-1 up. We, we're not going to lose this game. United have a habit of doing losing that game. But United just need to calm down from this scenario. Fair enough, we've conceded a goal that we shouldn't have conceded. But at the end of the day, we did. It was an unnecessary foul there from Bruno Fernandes. That eventually led up to Hakim Ziyech's goal. Made it 2-1 to Manchester United. But one thing United should have done is stay composed. And then United got some luck. And this was a very, very lucky thing for us to well happen. Because Mauro Icardi was classed as offside. However, if you do look at this little picture here, it looks like Victor Lindelof is playing him on. It looks like Lindelof is playing him on. It looks like his arm is over the offside line which ultimately results in a goal to Galatasaray, which would have made it 2-2. They would have gone back in the game. However, UEFA do laws a little bit strange. They do some strange laws. And the reason why you were offside is because if you do have a little look right through that gap, I'm going to show you here. Mauro Icardi's body is just over Victor Lindelof's body. For getting his arm right there, you can see that Mauro Icardi's body is further than Victor Lindelof's arm. Therefore, it results in an offside. The Premier League would give that a different... I do think the Premier League would do that a different rule. I think if it's if it was like that, if the VAR had that in the Premier League, it would probably be classed as a goal. But UEFA do things a little bit weird. They do some strange things. And personally, if I were a Galatasaray fan, I would have been raging over this decision because I would have thought, that's a goal. That's a goal, single-handedly. If you're watching that on the TV, you're thinking, it's a goal. However, via UEFA laws and UEFA's version of VAR, they believe that was offside, which personally, I liked. I liked how it was given offside because, well, we needed it. But at the end of the day, we got a bit of luck, but at what cost? Then we got that goal. We got the third one, Scott McTominay's goal, 3-1 to Manchester United. Right, now is the point where we should stay composed. Now. Because if we're not going to stay composed, then when will we stay composed? I mean, we've got a 3-1 lead against Galatasaray away at Istanbul. One of the most hostile grounds in the world. You need to calm. You need to stay calm. Relax. You've got that goal. Third goal. You can't switch off at any moment. You still have to play football. But Manchester United now, 3-1 lead should stay composed, they should think they've won the game, and then, look what happens. <laughs> yeah, 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 this, yeah, yeah, it's embarrassing really, absolutely embarrassing. I mean, you've got two hands, you've got two legs, save, you've got four chances of saving, it didn't happen then. It didn't happen then. And that goal was probably one of the worst goalkeeper mistakes I think I've ever seen. Because he had it. He had the ball. And yet, because his leg was wide out, that's what made the goal happen. I mean, that goal should have never gone in. Absolutely never gone in. But Andrew Onana somehow found a way to happen. And for my opinion... Uh, where's Andrew Nana's Galatasaray shirt? Where's Andrew Nana's Galatasaray shirt? Because I'm sure the the two games we play Galatasaray home and away, or the two the two games Manchester United play Galatasaray home and away, he let that goal in from Wilfred Zaha one nil bounce. Andrew Nana should have saved at one hundred percent. He got our main midfielder off. He got Casemiro sent off because he made a back pass which went to Ricardi. Casemiro had to tackle it. Penalty red card. So he caused that. He caused two things. Now he causes that to happen. I tell you what, three mistakes he's made against Galatasaray in two games. Where is his Galatasaray shirt? 
show it. I want Andro and Anna to show it because he should be your lot new signing. He should be Galatasaray's new signing, Andro and Anna, because the goalkeeping mistakes he has made, it, it, it probably has to look for some sort of investigation because how the how how on hell literally welcome to hell how on hell how the hell can he let that goal in how i i i don't understand how he can let that goal in however he did he did and that wasn't like the first goal the first goal united fans will be debating thinking should have even saved that i believe he could have but i believe he could have saved it but it was a good goal anyway that goal however was an embarrassment Hakim Ziyech didn't do anything. Hakim Ziyech just went for a normal free kick. But instead, it went off Andre Onana's body and somehow went in that net. Which, listen, non-league clubs should be doing that. Not Manchester United, the biggest football club in the world. But Andre Onana somehow finds a way to do so. He find a way. 3-2. Chimba Bumba back in it. And then the damage was more or less complete there. 70th minute. Karem Aktogulu found a way to get the goal. He found a way. It was another wonder goal. It was another wonder goal. We've seen two wonder goals from Garnacho and Bruno Fernandes this game. Galatasaray decided to add another wonder goal in. And it was by Karem Aktogulu in the 70th minute. The Turkish superstar. He is, he, is a, he is a player that's supposed to be very, very good in the world of, well, Turkish football. He is supposed to be not the messiah. But he's supposed to be a very, very, very good footballer in Turkey. And he found a way to score that goal for the Turkish Giants to make it 3-3. And for Manchester United, we had it coming. We had it coming. I mean, we've seen this before, haven't we? We've seen this from Bottlechester United against Copenhagen. Well, 3-1 up, firm control, off the game 4-3. This game, 3-1 up, lost the game, uh, drew the game 3-3. It's Bottle Chester United. It's Bottle Chester United, not 2.0. It's Bottle Chester United, episode 2. The massacre in Turkey. The Turkish massacre. Because it, it were. It were like, 3-1, fair control, 3-3. 3-3. And, yeah, pretty much, they got a very, very good result from it. And to be fair... I've, United got in a better result because I thought we would get absolutely smashed. I thought, looking at the game, we would lose about 3 or 4-1 against Galatasaray. I just thought the pressure would be on us a bit too much. However, I, a draw isn't too bad. I mean, like I said, I thought we would lose. But it puts us in a very, very sticky situation. And this is why we are in a bit of a sticky situation. Because, well, if you have a look at the group, Bayern Munich have qualified. Bayern Munich have qualified. No need to worry. We've qualified in first place. Then it comes to the other three teams. Copenhagen, Galatasaray, Manchester United. Galatasaray, we've played. Copenhagen, we've played. Galatasaray, a third with five points. Copenhagen, uh, second with five points. However, because of, well, goal differential, Copenhagen are up to second, which is best for them. And the draw against Bayern Munich will boost their, their morale massively ahead of the game against Galatasaray at the parking stadium, which could determine who will be going through to the next round. Because the game Manchester United do play next is Bayern Munich, is Bayern Munich at home. And if we do lose against Bayern Munich at home, that is our Champions League and European status gone. That is our Champions League and European status. We will finish fourth out of Europe entirely, which is, for Manchester United, absolutely embarrassing. And it is embarrassing. I mean, you can tell any other fan that they will laugh their absolute arse off if we, well, finish fourth. I mean, even 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 if we get Europa League and we'll get some laughs, it won't be as worse if we qualify, if, if we don't go into Europe altogether. So this is where we have to beat Bayern Munich. This is where... The must win out of the must win out of the must win games goes in entirely because this is lit quite literally a must win game. If we do not win this game, we are out of Europe. We are out of Europe, and that will mean Copenhagen or Galatasaray are able to qualify into the next round. If we do, if we do draw, we are out. We are out of Europe. If we do draw, however, I think what would be best is if, well. If we draw and if Galatasaray win, I, that might be enough for us to get Europa League. I'm not too particularly sure. If we draw and if Galatasaray win. So Europa League would be that. Champions League 
is if either Copenhagen and Galatasaray game does end up with a draw, and if Manchester United then have to win. Manchester United win a draw, and if both teams draw, will mean Manchester United will be going into last place. Saint tara to UEFA Champions League and Europa League football. So, this is where this comes in between we have to beat Bayern Munich, we have to beat them on December the 14th, 13th. Because if we don't, we will be out of the Champions League, out of Europe entirely, it's the 12th. And we will be classed as a laughing stock for all of the world of football. So just like that then, that will conclude everything there is to talk about regarding this game between Galatasaray and Manchester United. So if you do like that video, if you do say something, it really means a lot to me, but you don't have to, as I shall go, see you soon, stay safe, talking to you then in the next one. See ya and bye-bye.